Welcome back, everybody. I guess this is the uh, full length shopped update video because I, I just did that shorts because I just barely got the uh, equipment moved in and it had been an exhausting day. So, you get a look now at the uh, garage. Got everything a bit more organized and spaced out so that I've got some more room to work with things. And if I just give you a little look see around here, you can see. There's the workbench that I'm normally at. Uh, still need to clear out a bunch of things. I need to get some more shelving in here for the long-term long -term storage stuff. I still need to finish out clearing underneath the bench. I've been crushing a lot of cans. And that should uh, get that side cleaned up and ready to work again. And got all this storage equipment and our stuff that's been storing out here camping gear old computers some of my uh, extra beehive equipment and then over here this side of the garage is going to be my sort of uh, machining area and get everything nice kind of uh, set up over here and then when I set up uh, can't see it now but over here behind that there's a white panel over there, and that's actually where the power comes into the house. So I'm gonna have a power box set up here for the garage's uh, 210 or whatever. I'm gonna run the both phase to it for the uh, high power for all the equipment out here. But yeah, so let's get over to the uh, new equipment. Yeah, first off, sitting behind the table saw and everything over here, I'm not going to leave the table saw here, of course, because it's going to be in the way. I've got this Harbor Freight mill drill machine. It's one of the older kind of heavy-duty ones before they had sort of the integrated spindle. I got a decent enough deal on it. It came with some tooling, and I figured with that it was worth it. It's mostly in good condition. The ways are great. Like, the spindle's all in great condition. Belts are really nice. It's been oiled well and kept uh, and kept well, uh, and everything's in good condition. The only problem with it is the motor died. I'm not sure exactly what happened. It looked like somebody either messed up with the wiring or something came loose in the actual wiring block for the motor, and it, start, it uh, shorted the starting coil on it because it's a single-phase motor, and just completely toasted it and the starting coil was about half of the windings inside of the motor there's like yeah i looked in inside the back tray over there and it actually had like bits of melted wire that dripped out because it just yeah it just melted straight through that and uh i had uh opened it up to check if it uh if it was salvageable but no that uh that motor would need to be completely rewound to be worth it uh so i'm going to be looking for a good single phase motor to hook up to that. If not, I can probably just do what I'm doing with the other machines and get a VFD for it and do something. But I'm looking to have sort of about a one and a half, two horsepower motor for it, which is a pretty good amount of power for a small mill. And I've got a set of like collets and a collet chuck for it. And I think this one runs the R8 spindle. So there's a bunch of common tooling that will work well with it. And so, yeah, it, uh, I thought it was a decent enough deal for me to pick up so I could actually have some more capability in the shop. And and I'm sure it'll serve me well for a lot of the uh, small type of uh, work that I'm likely to be working on. So, yeah, it still needs some reassembly. It, uh, it was completely pulled apart for moving just so it would be easier to take care of guy I picked it up from didn't have any sort of heavy moving equipment in his garage so it was just a lot easier to disassemble the machine to get it out of there and so all, a lot of the knobs had been pulled off and everything so yeah that uh but yeah that should be nice to have and I'm gonna be working on getting some extra tooling for it like I've I should be able to get uh I know somebody who's got some uh fly cutters and a boring attachment for it that are all should all be in good condition if a bit old and worn out but uh yeah and that's that's for that one and on to this the more uh 
the thing I'm a bit more excited about is this is a uh, Boyer Schultz uh, H618 surface grinder. So it's got a six inch wide path by an 18 inch uh, length on the grinding. So this was uh, something I pulled off of a shop locally that unfortunately had to go out of business due to COVID. And he actually said he had never gotten to use, got to use it. He had purchased it secondhand off of a uh, instrument, you know, tool making uh, shop. And seems that a lot of not a lot of people wanted a machine like this where it's a fully manual. But checking it out, the ways were in really good condition. This moves real smooth. It does have a lot more oiling ports than some of the newer models and. Like I said, this is a fully manual one. I'm looking at uh, doing some something to uh, help with that. But uh, yeah, it's nice full set. Came with the stock. This is like the actual set stock uh, uh, single phase magnetic chuck that is actually sold with it. I checked uh, Hanchet is actually one of the ones that they supply by default to come with these machines. I also got a big stack of about eight or nine uh, grinding discs, so I have a good variety of discs for it. And that really is really nice for that because it kind of makes up a lot of the tooling that I need. Literally the only thing I need to do to get this running besides hooking up the spindle motor to three-phase power is making a making or buying an attachment to hold the diamond, cut, uh, the diamond dresser because luckily I also got that as well, even though that's not a big issue because those are kind of cheap. But uh, yeah, so... This, uh, this thing's all ready to go, and I just need to clean it up and dress the wheel and make some, uh, some more test cuts on it. But, uh, like, I checked the machine out in the guy's shop running on three-phase, and was, everything was working well. Magnetic check was working well. Spindle sounded amazing. And he had made a few test cuts on it about a year ago before he had uh, shut down his shop. And... Other than the fact that I, you could tell that the wheel was a bit uh, uneven, really great smooth cuts on it. So, yeah, and that's that's where that is, and I'm really excited to get this because I was able to get at least a nice deal on it because nobody seems to want the manual machines for uh, for uh, professional shops. So, yeah, that's really what uh, what I've got for updates, and still working on the lathe right now i've got a few uh few more parts in the headstock to finish uh 3d modeling and that will actually fully finish up the 3d model because i forgot to get some of those uh spindle gears and stuff but uh i'm going to be started on that headstock next on the lathe get it all uh painted up and reassembled and that's where we're going next that's all i got for you today though thanks for watching